In this tutorial, we'll configure our SAML single sign-on app on Jira together with Azure AD and just-in-time provisioning. Just-in-time provisioning means uh, we will be creating and updating users in the uh, Atlassian application based on values in the SAML response that we get from the identity provider. To do that, we'll first start off in our app in Jira, uh, do some basic configuration, um, and then we'll go off to um, uh, Azure AD, create an enterprise app over there, so that we have a SAML endpoint to authenticate against, and then we go back into our um, app to finish off the configuration, and at the end, we're certainly gonna test it as well. Let's jump into our Jira lab instance. You see I'm in user management. At the moment I only have an admin user there. Um, we'll aim to um, log in my Christian demo user uh, from Azure AD um, and also create it um, along the way uh, automatically. So um, if you have our SAML app installed, you have the menu item SAML single sign-on. Let's go there. And if you go there for the first time, you'll see our um, startup wizard. Let me say at this point, um, this tutorial shows you a relatively common setup. Um, if your setup is slightly different or it doesn't quite um, do what you need it to do, then please reach out to us. In many places in our app, but also on our website, you have the possibility to contact our support by raising a support request or to schedule a screen share session where we can actually do the actual configuration together with you. That's what we're here for. We love to help you. So uh, please don't get stuck. Just read out to, uh, reach out to us and we can help. So we want to add a new IDP here of the type Azure AD. That means we already have done a lot of pre-configuration in the wizard um, by choosing this. And you can also see um, the links to our step-by-step -step guides down here. Let's go to next. Here you see um, um, the uh, entity ID reply URL. Usually they are the same uh, unless you uh, went into our config and changed something. So if you haven't changed anything, you just need to copy one of them. And that's what we need to um, essentially move over to uh, Azure AD and finish the configuration there. So let's go to Azure. I'm in portalazure.com now. Um, I want to go to Enterprise Applications and create a new application. And now it brings me to the um, uh, catalog apps. Let's search for resolution there. And you should see our SAML single sign-on apps. Let's select the Jira one. The catalog apps, actually let's give that a name. Sierra Demo um, Jira. Um, use a sensible name there because that's the name that users will see in their dashboard um, if they use the um, Azure dashboard. And let's create it. So it's creating the app now. And while it's doing that, it's actually quite useful to have this catalog app. First of all, we can um, already do a lot of pre-configuration for you um, on there, but also it means um, you can use our plugin together with the free version or free tiers of Azure that, for example, comes with Office 365 out of the box. So you don't need any premium licenses, um, which you would need to have if you don't have a catalog app. So you see it's still creating that, but it'll take another two, three seconds, and then it's going to redirect us to the um, uh, overview of that app. Let's first go to properties, and we'll turn off um, user assignment here. What that actually means um, is that every user um, in your Azure AD can, will see this app and can also um, um, use the SAML integration to authenticate against um, um, Jira. It doesn't mean he can log into Jira because it also depends on the user having the right access into Jira. Um, but he can fundamentally use it from an Azure perspective. If that's not what you want, you can select, uh, you can go to users and groups and assign individual users or individual groups to um, this application and then only those users and groups will see the application in their dashboard. Let's say save and then go to single sign-on. Let's select SAML as a protocol here. 
say um, yes here and now we need to fix the um, standard URLs to be the one from your instance. Let's go to edit for this basic XAML configuration and replace those two URLs with what you copied from um, your plugin. So let's say save. And that means we're already, uh, let's test this later. We're almost done here. Um, let me say one more thing about uh, user attribute and claims. You see we have a lot of pre-configuration already. Uh, so by default, um, there's going to be an attribute given name um, that has the user given name, surname, email address, and the user principal name. I'm also going to just quickly go here. Um, this name ID is what Azure ID will send as a username. So by default, it's going to send the user, user principal name, so the UPN that you have in Azure. Um, if that's not quite what you need, you can change that here. For example, if you have an Active Directory that's synchronized to um, Azure AD and you want to use your Active Directory username as the, um, as the username, you can change this value to um, user on-premise account name, which by default contains your Active Directory name. Any more questions to that? Just contact us and we can help you there. Um, I just thought it's worth knowing um, that that's possible. We leave it on UPN for here. And um, now the next thing is we'll um, copy the um, Federation metadata URL. So I'll copy that here from the clipboard um, and paste that into the plugin later because that will then um, just do a lot of the configuration automatically on our side. Um, if you don't have a direct uh, internet connectivity from um, your Atlassian instance to, um, um, to load this URL from Azure, you can also do the download uh, as an XML file and then upload it in our plugin. Um, but the URL, if you can use it, is actually the better way because it allows us to monitor that URL for um, certificate changes and updates uh, once a day. Um, so that we can automatically uh, propagate any or read any changes in our plugin whenever they happen. So I copied that. We're finished on um, Azure ID. Let's go back to our plugin. Here we are. And let's go to next. And here it wants the metadata URL. If you have a file, you just um, um, select something else here. Um, but we'll paste the metadata URL, say import. And you see the import was successful, so we can go to next. This screen now shows you, um, or is asking about user ID um, uh, attribute and transformation. Um, if you want the same username in, um, that's being sent from Azure in Jira, um, then you don't have to do any settings here. I'm just gonna quickly uncheck that. Um, here, if, if you have any changes, if you need to do things like dropping the domain name, use a different attribute. Uh, you can configure that here. That's not part of our tutorial. So um, just that you know that's possible, um, then reach out to us um, if you need um, any help there. So we'll keep the usernames the same on both sides. Let's go to next then. Now it's asking us about user creation and update, so our provisioning features. Um, for this tutorial with just-in-time provisioning, we want to select um, uh, SAML attributes. We've also implemented um, the Craft API from Azure to do true user synchronization. So I really um, um, urge you to consider using the user sync functionality um, uh, instead of um, just-in-time provisioning. So check out the videos on that as well so that you know um, what are the pros and cons um, either way. So let's continue with SAML attributes here to have our just-in-time provisioning. And now we can do a couple of settings. Yes, we want to create new users. Um, we want to create them, that's the default, in the Jira internal directory. The next thing is, do we also want to update users not created by this app? So if you have a um, um, Jira instance that's historically grown and have many users already, um, that's one consideration if you only want the app to modify users that have been created by the app or if you want to also update existing users, then you can check this. 
Um, here it's asking for the full name attribute for uh, the attribute and the summer response that contains the email. That's already set to the defaults that we have in our catalog app, so nothing to do um, here. Um, next thing is I also want to, when I create or update the user, I want to add them into the um, Jira software users group here, so I'll do that. Generally, our plugin also has the capability to read group memberships from summer responses, and we could also add that on the Azure side. There is one downside with Azure that Azure only supports um, group IDs in, um, in the summer responses, which are long, unique um, strings. So it wouldn't send a group name like Jira users, it would send you the object ID. Um, there are ways to deal with that, but in that case, if you need that, really look at the user sync functionality because that gets the native names via the API and it's usually the better solution uh, for this. But to be able to give users the correct rights in Jira, we'll um, assign them to the G um, Jira software users group. And um, that's it. We can go to save and next. So that config will create a user that's new. It will also update the, um, anything that changed on name, email address, and it will also um, put those new users into the Jira software users group so that they have rights to access Jira. So with the configuration, we're essentially finished. So let's um, start and test our settings. Let's click start here. That will create an authentication tracker, or what we call an authentication tracker. Um, that's um, something that keeps all the messages around an existing authentication um, together and it's a great troubleshooting tool. So let's we'll see, um, we got a special URL here. I'm going to copy that and we'll now open that URL in incognito window that then redirects us to um, Jira onwards to uh, Azure AD so that we can log in. Um, and uh, this page here will then display all the results if it was a success and um, it's got a lot of uh, more troubleshooting information there as well. So let's do that. Copy it. Uh, let's open an incognito window. Paste the URL here. Let's go there. Go to Jira, then get over to um, Azure AD. And let me log in here now. And now we get redirected back to Jira and you see it's um, giving me the first start wizard um, because it uh, created that user and it's the first time that user logs in. But let's go back to um, our plugin. You now see the results of this tracker, so it's a success. Um, we have my uh, user CR local one um, at Azure AD Lab Resolution DE being logged in. And you do see a lot of the um, debugging message um, what we extracted from the summer response down to the um, original summer request, etc. So you can see there's a lot of um, information in this tracker. It's a great troubleshooting tool. And for example, if this would have failed now and you don't quite know why uh, on how to fix it, you can also um, uh, hit the contact support button and open a case in our Jira service desk straight away with this tracker attached um, so that you give us a lot of information already to help you um, uh, fix the issue. But we've had a success here, so we can go to next. And this is essentially the last screen of the visit. Um, so far, nothing we have done has impacted um, your production system. We had a special URL to um, log in. If you check enable SSO redirect now and then save and close, it will start redirecting all users to the um, uh, to Azure AD uh, for their login. So depending on your system, you may want to do that in a maintenance window uh, and inform your users beforehand. So um, you can then leave this enable SSO redirect unchecked, say save and close and go back to the config later on to activate it um, under the redirection tab. Or uh, if, um, if you want to do it like I do it now, enable it here, say save and close, and then you're essentially finished with the tutorial. Thanks, and I really hope that was useful to you and you learned something along the way. 
Um, if you get stuck anywhere, remember we're here to help. So um, hit our um, Jira support portal um, or um, go and schedule a screen share session with us where we can um, uh, really help you do the configuration live on your system. Thanks.